Hello everyone, welcome to my stream. I'm George. You can find me as uh, Volkero in various Amiga forums. Uh, welcome, welcome to uh, the stream. This is the classic Amiga stream and uh, we are working with the Python and I have uh, some interesting stuff to, to show you today. Happy Friday everyone. Uh, as you know, every Friday I'm uh, doing streams, live streams about uh, classic Amigas and uh, working with the workbench and uh, we try to find uh, interesting software and try it out. I have done a few of these uh, streams some years ago but uh, now I'm doing uh, things on a Pystorm Amiga here on my classic Amiga 1200. How are you doing everyone? Uh, hello C277, hello Amikit, welcome to my stream and everyone in the chat. Um, today I have some interesting stuff to, to show you and uh, actually the stream is going to be much more interesting. Uh, today we are going to have a look on the army kit for the Python. I have here uh, a copy of that uh, distribution, let's say, Amiga OS uh, distribution and we will see today uh, how you can install it, what needs to be done and what actually brings you and for that I'm not going to be alone uh, today we are, I'm going to have a, a one more person on the, the stream something that I haven't done for a long long time uh, but I'm really glad to do it uh, right now I will have uh, Jan Zahuradzik who is the uh, developer of the Amikit and the person behind all the releases of uh, Amikit. Uh, I'm going to have him in a few minutes uh, on stream and we can discuss about uh, everything about Amikit and uh, you can also share your uh, thoughts or your uh, questions and uh, we will try to, to answer them. So yeah, this is going. To, I hope this is going to be fun for you as much as uh, for me. So let me switch my screen, and uh, yeah, as uh, you know, Amikit is uh, one distribution uh, based on Amiga OS 3 that uh, promises to uh, change everything for your system. Uh, but uh, this is something that I will uh, let Jan to describe more in a few minutes. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that you can find it on amikit.amiga.sk uh, and that's the website that you see here. And uh, there are different versions uh, for Windows, Mac and Linux, uh, for Raspberry Pi, uh, Pi Store and Vampire uh, which you can uh, buy and uh, use it yourself. So let me give a call to Jan. Uh, Jan, can you hear me now? Is it? Nice, nice. Let's see because uh, I have some delays from my side. Give me a sec. Uh, how are you doing? Are you okay? It is late uh, for you right now, eh? late in the night. So thank you, thank you for, for having me. Uh, this was uh, unexpected actually because uh, you told me a few days ago that um, you're gonna stream about the Pystorm and today I was like, uh, hey, do you want me on a stream? Because I have time, I'm, I'm at home alone, so I just proposed it and you were like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. So nothing is prepared uh, and I like it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Actually. 
if there's so, let, so yeah. let's make it on 10 hours. Um, and uh, uh, may I ask you a question actually? I'm, I'm curious. Do you have a, a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 uh, in Firestorm? I currently have a Raspberry Pi 3 uh, B Plus right now. Okay. okay. So it's not the fastest uh, Raspberry Pi out there, uh, and uh, I know that uh, your application, the AmiKit, is uh, requiring a lot of uh, resources. But uh, I'm curious to see how it, it would work with uh, uh, this uh, smaller version of uh, Raspberry Pi. Not so fast. I'm also curious uh, because my setup is uh, aiming at 1200 with the uh, Pystorm and Raspberry uh, Pi 4 and uh, I never I never tried, to be honest, I never tried on Raspberry Pi 3 myself, uh, my, my beta testers did. Uh, so I'm also curious how fast it is, but let's see. Um, cool. Um... Give me a sec because I see some issues with the stream. Uh, let me check if I can do something. Always, always this technology uh, drives you crazy. Uh, you can uh, make uh, as many uh, tests as you want, but uh, at the end something will fail. And what's wrong? I'm seeing people uh, missing some uh, frames. Uh, Cito, can you can you let me know if uh, the uh, stream is fine now? I closed uh, Jan my video from your side, so uh, you don't you, you can't see me. Uh, but uh, yeah, to to save a few resources, to be honest. I see you. I see you on Twitch, actually. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Hello, FF Shock. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, it's a little bit soppy. Seems okay now. Not butter smooth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe something with my internet connection again. <laughs> Probably. Or my internet connection. Who knows? We will see. We will see how it goes. It's a, uh, I see more than 30 frames per second, so it should be fine, I guess. Um, so, yeah, uh, thank you very much for sending me the AmiKit for the PyStorm. You know that I'm using uh, AmiKit on uh, Linux for a long time right now. And uh, having that for the PyStorm is uh, really interesting stuff for me. Uh, I know that uh, the first release uh, for Amikit, to just remember the old times, was back in 2005. Uh, yeah, long, and, long time. And I guess you started developing that uh, much earlier before the first release. So it's more than 20 years, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, time flies, actually. <laughs> I cannot believe it. It's like 20 years, you know. It's like, wow. And I'm still into it, you know. <laughs> I yeah. still like it. That's what I wanted to, to ask you. What drives you working on that still? Uh, and uh, make updates and make new releases and support more hardware. Uh, I don't I don't know. Simply simply I like Amiga, I doing I'm doing this. And um, what um, what is really cool is the feedback from the users, you know, like they uh, they really like it. And this is what uh, what powers me to to continue and uh, to deliver new updates, uh, you know, so. Uh, I think 20 years, 20 years, it's like you have a uh, you have a baby, which is 20 years old now, you know, <laughs> exactly. And, and uh, I'm still uh, taking care of it and uh, and I like it and I'm proud of it actually uh, that uh, that I managed to uh, 
to release something like this and regularly update it and people appreciate it. So that's the most, uh, th that's, that's the thing I, I like about. I have seen you attending a lot of um, Amiga events around the world. So uh, I'm sure you got all this appreciation in person from people coming and talking to you and saying how much they love or hate uh, Amikit <laughs> and uh, what kind of um, problems they found or how beautifully it worked for them. So you know uh, you take the, the, the feedback in person many times, right? Uh, not so not so often actually because I visited um, only only few few events, you know, like five of them or something. And usually, usually I'm uh, when I'm there and showing Amikit, it's uh, quite exhausting. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> uh, so sometimes I uh, I'm tired of. Uh, of um, uh, presenting the same 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 thing, you know. So most most of the feedback is um, uh, is online actually. Cool. Um, and usually, uh, actually, um, uh, I got some critique also, you know, because someone someone wanted uh, to install Emikit for PyStorm, and um, you know. Um, Somehow I, I assumed that people who have the real Amiga are somehow experienced and advanced. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's what my assumption. And, um, and suddenly I got a critique that um, for some people it was difficult to install it uh, and uh, difficult to to unpack. Uh, archive or something like this, you know, because my install instructions were Amiga after 20 years, you know, so they, uh, they have no knowledge. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, not much, but they have a real, real Amiga, you know, so yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> so I need to be, um, uh, I need to make uh, stuff, uh, in the manual and instructions uh, more precise for them. Uh, for uh, for the uh, packets inside the packets that I that you send me, I have uh, so, uh, one paper of uh, guidelines on what uh, yeah. I need to do to install it. I have to tell everyone. Hello, SLD Snake. Welcome to stream. Exactly this one. SLS. I printed it too, you know, <laughs> because now we are going to install it. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I just have to, to mention that I haven't done any installation uh, so far. I haven't tested that. I don't know what needs to be done. Uh, I have read the instructions and they seem quite uh, understandable and easy to, to follow. And so we are going or to you, see. Yeah. You know, we will see. Okay. We will see. I, I might fail somewhere, so I don't want to, to say big words right now. <laughs> so we'll, we will follow all the, the uh, steps uh, today here, and uh, we are going to uh, install uh, the SD on my Amiga uh, 1200 with the Python that I have here. Uh, SLD Snake says perhaps each, other, each user has its own needs and its own experience or nostalgia. Yes. That's, uh, that's true because a lot of uh, Amiga users uh, have a nostalgia of uh, playing games and they don't go deep inside the, the way that Workbench uh, works. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing these uh, streams and live streams and explain everything and um, how I know to do stuff with the Amiga. That doesn't mean that I'm doing them in the perfect way. Uh, that's why a lot of times you have seen me guys failing to install even the simplest things and then I search it a little bit more and when I find the solution I present it here. So let's uh, go through the installation uh, if you don't mind uh, Jan 
And uh, during the installation, we can talk about uh, the stuff around uh, AmiKit and your experience with uh, the Amiga. So, so having this uh, experience I just described before, uh, let's start with explanation what the Pi Storm is, actually. Yeah. Would you like to start? Would you like to share a few things? Uh, Would you, you tell like... something about Pi Storm, and I will tell something about AmiKit, actually. Okay, okay. Uh, in this stream, we have seen a lot of, I, I think I have done 11 streams about uh, the Pi Storm. Uh, the Pi Storm is... Uh, just, just quickly. In, yeah, 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 something quickly. Um, the Pi Storm is an expansion card that you can add on different Amiga models, like uh, 1200 that I have here, but you can add it on... To, uh, 2,500, I think there is a Pi Storm for 600 as well. Uh, I'm not sure about 3,000 and uh, 4,000. I think there uh, is nothing yet right there. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. So, and, and those expansions, um, you can connect a, a Raspberry Pi uh, there on that expansion that uh, utilizes, that is utilized as uh, the CPU of the system, um, it uh, uses the, the Pi Storm, sorry, the Raspberry Pi to emulate in a way the, the CPU of the system. It emulates a 68040 with an FPU and uh, because Raspberry Pi is uh, super fast, this CPU is it's crazy fast for the, for the Amiga. Is the fastest, uh, let's say, expansion right now for the Amigas, for the classic Amigas. Uh, there is, uh, there are a few uh, Raspberry Pis that are uh, supported. I think it starts from uh, uh, Raspberry Pi 3A, 3B, uh, 0.2, and uh, Raspberry Pi 4, 4A, 4B, and uh, the the compute module uh, CM4. The compute module uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, unfortunately, right now there is no working. It is not working with uh, Raspberry Pi Five because there is uh, some delay on the GPIO uh, connection of the Raspberry Pi, which is used to communicate between Amiga and the uh, Raspberry Pi CPU. Um, the Raspberry Pi also. Uh, doesn't only uh, emulate the CPU, uh, the 68040, but also provides support for RTG uh, screens uh, using Picasso. Uh, and uh, also uh, the few couple of months, I think, the, the Amigas can connect to Wi-Fi through the Raspberry Pi, right? And uh, there are the, the development for the uh, Raspberry Pi and the, the Pi Storm in general is uh, a continuing thing. Uh, people are developing stuff behind it and uh, expansions. We expect at some point to have an expansion that connects uh, inside the Amiga that will drive the native RGB screen through the Raspberry Pi so you can have only one exit, one output to your uh, uh, monitor and you can uh, have there all the native uh, resolutions or the native screens. For example, if you want to play a game, you don't need to switch to another uh, monitor. You can use uh, the same output from your Amiga. Uh, using a, an HDMI from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and that's what the, this uh, system is uh, all about. The good thing is that as soon as newer versions of Raspberry Pi are released, you can upgrade your system to a faster one uh, just by buying a new Raspberry Pi. And that's an interesting stuff. For, for me right now, I have the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. But if uh, tomorrow I go out and buy the Raspberry Pi 4 B+, for example, I don't know if that model exists, but I think it, is, it does, uh, my system is going to be much faster with the minimum amount of uh, uh, money that I'm, I need to, to exchange. Uh, Cito says, Amikit works for every Pi Storm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Do you have anything else to, to add on that explanation from my side? Um, uh, yeah, um, people sometimes wonder um, whether it is uh, emulation or not. And that's a very interesting question. Uh, and uh, I consider it as not as emulation uh, because you have a real Amiga and you put this card into it with PyStorm. So for, to me, it's like a, a turbo card, you know, like any other turbo card you can get just with a different CPU. It's not a Motorola CPU, it's something different, but uh, so it replaces the Motorola CPU on, on your Amiga mm -hmm. and uh, and that's it. And it adds, and it adds uh, RTG, so it's like turbo card uh, with the graphics card uh, in one, and that's it. Nothing else is touched. Exactly, uh, I agree with you. Um, and the price is the it's really low. I mean, the Pystorm to buy the Pystorm it's something around sixty and uh, ninety uh, euros, I think. And then it has to be an, um, depending the Raspberry Pi that you want to buy. Now, if you go to buy an, uh, the CM4, uh, the Compute Module 4, uh, mm -hmm. you will need uh, to, to get extra hardware from the PyStorm side so that this Compute Module can uh, be connected and uh, use it. Uh, so the price might go a little bit higher on that. And, um, but I think that uh, you never uh, pass the let's say 200 euros to to create to get all this all the stuff uh with yeah, the yeah. raspberry pi but the problem is that once you have this set up you will spend more and more money on your amiga <laughs> if you are yeah ideas the floppy drive external floppy drive this thing some software and speakers you know <laughs> because suddenly you find out that your Amiga has a new new life, you know, and it's super fast. And you're like, wow, this is this really a 30, 40 years old computer on my desktop? <laughs> you know, such it's amazing. Yes. So PyStorm is, uh, for me, it's like a revolution uh, that brought the new light into, into Amiga again. Uh, in my opinion, since it brings so much power, you can uh, make people uh, try to build stuff, uh, software that uh, require a lot of resources. Uh, you don't yeah. have to uh, be always um, uh, trying to save resources as much as possible because the hardware that people are using is... Uh, not uh, that powerful. So things like that and things like, um, let's say, the Vampire expansions that bring a lot of uh, power to our classic uh, computers is always, in my opinion, welcome. Uh, no matter if it is considered emulation or uh, FPGA emulation or anything. If you have fun with your classic Amiga and if that makes your classic Amiga uh, fast, that's great. Hello, Aris Amiga. Welcome to the stream. Um, and so let's let's go and start the installation. Okay. Uh, do you have all required files? I, I think I think, but we will see. Okay. First of all, I will read a little bit from the uh, document that you sent me. That uh, the recommend. I can, I can tell you right away. Uh, actually, yes. so what you got with, with the Emmy kit? Oh, may, uh, maybe I should uh, tell, uh, say something about uh, Emmy kit. What is it? What are we going to install, actually? Yes, absolutely. Go <laughs> so, uh, so Emmy kit is um, a collection of pre-installed uh, programs, and um, there are like more more than four hundred of them, and. Um, it includes everything uh, you need to to have a really supercharged Amiga. The only thing that it doesn't include is the Amiga OS and uh, Kickstart ROM. So this is something you need to deliver yourself. And uh, a Python version of Amikit 
um, supports only one and only system, which is the latest OS 3.2. So this is what you need. And, and um, so everything is pre-installed and all you need is to put this thing into it and it becomes, uh, it becomes live. So first of all, you will need uh, all the ADFs from uh, from um, OS three point two uh, CD. Okay. So let, let me see. Okay. First of okay. all, what I have done is I took the SD card that you sent me with uh, Abicate, okay. and okay. one of the first steps that uh, you are writing here in installation that I think this is uh, really necessary to be said is first of all back up your micro SD card. Yeah. Uh, I think that is uh, crucial. Uh, I have done that already, and I okay. have that on my hard disk uh, as an image. Uh, and I think that everyone should uh, have that in mind because if you want to, for any reason, to uh, create a new brand installation from the scratch, this is needed. Uh, so before you do any change on your uh, SD card, take a backup of the of the SD card. Uh, secondly, you say copy all ADF files from uh, the Amiga OS 3.2 uh, CD to eight sli uh, and the folder ADF to the micro SD cards on a specific folder. Now, if you connect uh, the micro SD, sorry, go ahead, yeah. So, so first thing after the backup uh, is that you need to connect uh, your SD card to some other system than Amiga. So. It's either Mac or Windows or Linux. Yes. So any any system, because the boot partition of this card is FAT32, so it is readable. It is readable on any system, including Amiga later or mm -hmm. MKit when you install it. Um, and on this boot partition, there is also MU68, uh, which is which is crucial uh, to run uh, to run PyStorm. So, and on this card, as you can see, there are folders, uh, Amiga OS 3.2, Kickstarter, ROM, Picasso, Roadshow, and stuff like this. So, first, let's copy, let's copy the ADFs from, from that ISO I, I, I see over there, the red icon. Yes. Uh, so, what I have done, because my laptop doesn't have a CD-ROM, I have the ISO uh, of the CD, so it's, it's exactly the same thing. So, uh, what I need to do is to uh, go to the ADF and take all these files and copy them into Amiga OS 3.2, 3.2 uh, folder. Yeah. Okay, like, like so. Uh, can I ask you, Jan, why do you ask people to do all this stuff, all these uh, steps? that we are going to do to, uh, today. Why don't you just include everything in there and say, okay, burn the, the SD card and uh, you're going to be fine. Uh, everything works fine out of the box. Why do I have to do all these steps? Um, that's simple and easy, you know, because I respect the community. So, so this Amiga OS 3.2 is a commercial product and I simply cannot include it. And um, yeah, I could I could uh, ask for a license and stuff, but um, uh, that would be extra work, you know. I'm just alone uh, working on on Amikit, so uh, I assume that everybody uh, who is serious with Amiga has already has this Amiga OS 3.2. So I cannot include it. I don't want to include it. So you have to. Yeah. Good. You know, uh, but on my part, I did everything as easy as possible. So once you, for you, it's enough just to copy the files there and my, my install script will pick it up and install everything for you. We will see again. We will see if that works. <laughs> so uh, the second step is to copy the hotfix uh, file, the LHA file. Um, we don't need any of the other updates. We can get the hotfix from the Hyperion Entertainment uh, website 
and that means that you guys have the uh, serial number of your uh, Amiga OS 3.2 and you can uh, have your um, software registered on Hyperion's website and then you have access to the downloads uh, and you explain here all these uh, steps and we have to copy that file inside again Amiga OS 3.32 uh, folder right here yep. like it is the LHA file we don't need to extract anything no, no, no. Then, uh, sorry, go ahead. Alice Amiga, Alice Amiga asked, like, uh, um, if Amikit for Pistol, Python work with 3.1. Uh, no, it does not. It requires 3.2, and that's the on, one and only system that is supported. And I can explain, actually. Um, when uh, Amikit was released in 2005, it supported all all the available OSs at the at the time, so except 3.1 because that was the oldest one. Mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. it was like 3. Point, you could you could use you could use 3.5, 3.9, um, uh, 3. Point, uh, uh, mm, XL Amiga Forever, you know, and yes. like all, all the all the. All the uh, all the all the versions, and it was because um, of my perfectionism. <laughs> you okay. know, I simply wanted all uh, all uh, OSs to be supported, but over the years, uh, it become um, quite difficult to support all of them. I mean, Emikit Emikit on Windows, Mac, Linux. Um, and the Raspberry still supports all of them, and it's okay. But recently, I changed uh, just a recommendation. You know, I was he I hesitate to recommend OS version before, but now I recommend Amiga Forever. Uh, not because uh, not because I consider it the best, but because I use it every day and I test Amikit uh, with Amiga Forever. The thing is why it became difficult was that uh, Amikit or Amiga OS behaves slightly differently on a different systems. So it became very difficult to test something because, for example, it worked on 3.9, but it didn't work on some other systems or vice versa, you know, and that was that was very difficult. Uh, so so for me, every program that I added to Emikit, it had to be tested on every single uh, OS. And that's that's not all, because for OS 3.5, there are two Boeing bags. For OS 3.9, there are also two Boeing bags, you know? Yeah. So, and every Boeing bag brings something slightly different and things can work differently. So, so, uh, when I uh, when I got older, I was like, okay, now I'm releasing a new product, Emikit for PyStorm, and I don't want to, and I don't want to go through this difficult testing again. So I will support only one system. Yeah. And uh, at that time, 3.2 was released, and I was like, okay, this is the best uh, OS so far, uh, or the latest one, best or latest or mm -hmm. both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I went with this one only. Yeah. And it makes uh, easier for me to to adapt everything only for this OS. And um, yeah, exactly. Like... I agree, I agree. Uh, we don't have to, to make our lives uh, much harder than they are. So I believe that yeah. uh, supporting only 3.2, which is currently under development and we expect at some point to have a newer version so i guess the next one is going to be all also supported by you because you i guess uh, you would like to support the latest uh, release of uh, amiga os right which one which one you said i didn't hear yeah uh, the, the if uh, the amiga os 3.3 is uh, going to be released oh, yeah. at some point yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, because because that will be easy because that's just I mean just it's an update of three point two line, you yeah. know. So so yeah, of course I will I will support it. 
So we, and, uh, yeah, go ahead. And and, uh, and it's nice to have 3.2 support because it's actively actively developed. So uh, so I'm supporting them as well, you know, with, with my product. Have you found any problems while you were developing the AmiKit uh, that you reported back to the development team and they fixed it or something? Actually, I am the uh, um, beta tester of 3.2 and 3.3 as well. Cool. And, uh, and um, so you yeah, have... there is a... So you have access yeah, yeah. to all this stuff uh, even before it's uh, yes. public. Yes, yes. So and that uh, that makes things even even easier for me to to support it ahead of its release. Oh, ah, yeah. uh, You know, so I, so I can prepare. That's that's awesome. So we copied the hotfix uh, already, and you say in the uh, document that uh, copy a specific ROM file uh, from the hotfix. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to open the LHA um, to the microSD kickstart ROM. This is inside uh, Amiga OS 3.2. Can, can you see it so I can see it? Yes, sorry. I always forget to, to switch screens. Yeah, uh, this is the inside the hotfix uh, LHA file. Uh, inside the folder update 3.2 and the ROMs and there is the 1247-111 ROM file. So this file needs to be uh, copied in the uh, kickstart ROM. Let me extract this. Uh, sorry, because it is... 1201, yeah. Yes, give me a sec to extract it mm -hmm. because the program that I'm using on um, Linux doesn't support LHA files always but I need to run it on um, the terminal so we have ROMs and the file that we need is the first one 1247-111, I will copy that into the kickstart ROM. Okay. Like that. It is in here. Yeah. So the next thing that I need to do is to copy the Picasso 96. Uh, but wait a sec. Um, as far as I remember, you need to rename that kickstart to uh, kick. Dot right, run. right. You are right. So I need to rename that to kick. Dot rom, and that's because you have uh, from the MU sixty eight. There is a configuration file here. Yeah. I think config. Uh, dot txt that. Uh, uh, let me have it on the screen. Config txt that says the name of the, the ROM that needs to be loaded here. Right? Right. So, okay, and uh, then we need to copy the Picasso into the folder that says Picasso 96. Like that. The Picasso 96 is the one that is used, uh, uh, everyone can download from Abinet version 2.0, right? And yep, can, exactly. I, can I ask you, what happens if someone has the latest version from uh, individual computers? Can they use this one? Yeah, they can use it, but not for the installation. Uh, they can use it later uh, mm -hmm. when Amikit is, is installed. And you simply copy the new uh, new archive to to uh, Amikit uh, expansion folder, and it will be installed automatically. Cool. Okay. So uh, then uh, we need to copy the road so 1.14 uh, mm -hmm. inside the folder. Uh, I think there is a newer version 1.15. I guess yeah. it's uh, yeah. it can be used, right? 
it can be um, uh, not for the insulation again because okay. uh, this card was created uh, in October 2023. Okay. And at, at the time, this this roadshow 1.14 was available as the latest. Uh, but again, once Amikit is installed, you can uh, you can copy uh, um, the latest one to expansion folder, and it will be installed automatically. Mm -hmm. The thing why the new new version cannot be installed right away is that they changed the full, uh, the archive structure. Yeah. So okay. uh, my installs installer script uh, cannot pick it up anymore. Okay. Okay. Um, and here in and the... again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Again, rename re rename that file to roadshow dot uh, only without the um, without the version suffix. Without the version. Okay. You see, you you are helping me a lot. Uh, great. And. Um, you propose here to install the full version of the roadshow, so it means that uh, it might not work with the installation with the uh, the demo version, right? You have a this, this one is full one, right? Yes, this is a full one. Okay, the demo version is pre-installed in Amikit, so if you don't have a full version, you can skip this step. Okay, it's okay. Okay, and uh, the demo version works for fifteen minutes. So it's enough to download uh, Amikit uh, updates, actually. Perfect, perfect. And, uh... and now, one, one more thing, George. Uh, please go to my website, and uh, we are going to download a, a Wi-Fi driver for, um, for Pystorm. Uh, so you don't need any Amiga network card. So with this driver, which needs to be downloaded externally, it's not part of the Amikit because, uh, like I said, it was released in 2023 in October, and at the time, this Wi-Fi driver was not available yet. Yes. But, but I made them um, go go all down to the requirements, and you will find a link to to that one. Yeah, where you see the new. Go up. Go, go up to ah, requirements. Here. Okay. And the Wi-Fi PCM, oh, no, not the PCMZ Wi-Fi. For uh, Amiga Internet connection now provided for the Raspberry Pi itself. That's the link. Yeah, click. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, no, no, uh, there, yeah. That's where I went to download the Wi-Fi Pi for um, the stream that I did uh, some time ago. Uh, but I had some issues with that link. It never worked for me. If you remember, I sent you some messages to... If you could send me the, the archive, because I can't download it. Okay, try 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 now, and if it doesn't work, I can send send it to you uh, on Discord. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't do anything. Let me try with another browser. And if you if you right click, right click and uh, uh, download. Let's try that. Right click, uh, save link as, and I will try that. Ah, okay. No, it's not working. It downloads something like a Wi Fi uh, PHP. Okay, I will send it to you. Just a second because I released. Um... Let me check if I have that version. Uh, no, no, I used a new one recently, so... Oh, okay. Uh, so let me find it here. Maybe that uh, link, it, it is not working only for me. That doesn't mean, uh, guys, that it's not I, working I to, for you. You're the only one uh, who... <laughs> it doesn't work. work. You see, it doesn't work for me. It uh, times out. 
that is weird so uh, if we get that uh, driver we need also to install it inside uh, the boot uh, partition of the sd right no 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 um this has to be installed once amikid is, re is ready ah okay so, so we can do that later but, uh, but let's copy to the boot partition so you have access access to it you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, just just a second I, I will find it on my my server and uh, I will send it to you. Yes, absolutely. And uh, what can I say about uh, so the last uh, step that you need to, to take is uh, optional. Copy additional ROM files to micro SD cards uh, inside the WHD ROMs. Uh, for me here, I have uh, you provide information about the different versions of the ROMs that you might the, the user might need. Uh, for me, I have these ROMs which I think I got from the um, Amiga Forever uh, package. Yep. So I, I hope that they are going to work just fine. And I, from the name of the folder, I guess these are needed for the WHD load to play the games and the demos, right? Exactly, exactly. This is for the games. So, so uh, uh, WH... Uh... D load can find it. Yeah, I was struggling to to pronounce it in English because I use a yeah I use a Slovak uh, abbreviation for. Them. And how is it in Slovak? Uh, I, uh, we say we had a load. Ah yeah. <laughs> uh... Oh, by the way, when uh, when you introduced me, uh, you said my surname right. I was surprised. I know, did. So <laughs> you did. Oh my <laughs> and... God! Thanks. Even my people, even my people in Slovakia cannot catch it on, on, on the first time, you know, and cannot even write it correctly. So I was surprised. Heads off. I will I will not try to do that again, to be honest. <laughs> you succeeded. It was enough. <laughs> One time is fine. I have that recorded, so it's fine. It's great. <laughs> uh, Samika says... It. I send the archive to to Discord. You can you can download it from there and copy to to boot partition. Oh, great. Let me download it. Aris Amika says it works for me. You mean the 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 URL? Uh, are you running uh, Aris Amika? Are you running any uh, Windows system or uh, Apple Mac OS? It might work on only on Mac OS, I don't know. It works for me also on Windows, <laughs> Mac. So you 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 made a, a link, uh, Jan, for the Mac OS users only. <laughs> no, it works. I mean, I just download it on Windows for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So give us a second because my laptop is scrolling. Uh, I have too many things uh, right now running and uh, at the same time while I'm doing the stream, so it is a little bit slow. Inside boot and this is an uh, LZ LZX uh, file. Yeah. I think we are good. Uh, yes, it is here. 1.8 megabytes okay so that's all that you need to do to uh, have to start the installation of the amikit so what i need now to do is to extract to unmount the the boot inject everything again i'm using uh, linux here so you guys uh, if you're using mac os or windows you need to see how this can be done from your side. And before I plug the SD, I would like to say that uh, inside the package that I received, I, I got a couple of beautiful stickers with the Amikit uh, logo, right? I got uh, a thank you card from uh, Jan 
which on the opposite side has a, a serial number that you can use to uh, get the updates for the AmiKit. Jan, feel free to correct me uh, at any point. And also this uh, card holder, this awesome card holder that you can use to store uh, different uh, SD cards. It takes uh, at the top and the bottom there, there are uh, slots to, to store your SD cards so you can have them uh, in one place, not losing them and all this stuff. And this, this uh, card holder is really well made uh, Jan. it is uh, really strong and it's not it doesn't feel cheap and uh, with the sd card that i got which is 64 gigabytes uh, with a converter uh, of the sd to micro sd uh, that's all you get when you buy the amikit is there anything else that you you send to to people um, well, I'm running out of the stickers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, would you like to, to share a little bit uh, until I put my SD inside the computer to share uh, where they can go and uh, buy if someone is interested? Like you said, it, uh, uh, you can go to my website, which is emikit.emiga.sk and SK stands for Slovakia. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, um, uh, you can buy it from uh, Retropassion, which is located in the UK. And you can buy it from uh, Alinea Computers as well, which is uh, based in Germany. And uh, recently, uh, a shop from Australia, Australia um, have a small badge. Um, I don't know if they put it on their uh, website yet. I hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully they did. So if you are from Australia, Australia, you can buy it from there as well. And how about the people from the uh, UK who are considering buying from anywhere outside the uh, UK because of the uh, taxes? Is there anyone uh, selling it? Yeah, like I said, uh, retrofashion from UK. So uh, you can, okay. yeah, you can buy it from them. And also, if you are from US, you can you can buy it from from them, because uh, you don't pay um, you don't pay uh, extra tax, this value added tax, you know. So you don't pay if you're American and buying from UK. Perfect, perfect. So what I did right now was to I put the SD card inside the uh, Pystorm over the at the slot for the SD card of the uh, Raspberry Pi mm -hmm. and uh, that's the first boot that we see. Uh, I have the HDMI connected and I also have here the output from the native uh, RGB connection. Okay, uh, so switch to Sorry? Switch to native one because the installation, uh, yeah, installation starts on native screen. Exactly. This is a recap uh, what needs to be done. So mm -hmm. I believe we, we, did, we did everything, right? Because so MGOS 3.2 ADFs, hotfix, and, uh, and roadshow, and extra rooms. So we did everything. Okay, we did everything, so we can proceed. Then I yep. will import everything to Amikit. So I guess I need to uh, press Enter. And it starts doing its magic. Uh, so it gets all the, the files and extracts them uh, to the right places, right? and uh, yep. preparing the, the setup. And then after this is going to be finished, I hope uh, successfully, <laughs> uh, we will uh, reboot, I guess, to go inside uh, the workbench. Yeah. That's, so that's what's, great. Happen what's happening now is that all the ADFs are being uh, extracted and uh, copied to RAM. And uh, then hotfix is ex extracted, roadshow, Picasso, and everything. 
everything is copied to RAM, and then as a one package, it's copied to to SD card uh, to to a boot to any kit boot partition, not not the FAT32 partition. Okay, so it, since you are doing everything in RAM, if I stop the process right now, nothing is going to be so far changed in the actual uh, system, right? Yeah, but don't do that. <laughs> no, no, I, I will not. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> no, 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 no. I will not do that. Um, and what happens if someone... Uh, if something happens for someone, for some reason, the Amiga reboots or anything before this is uh, completed, it can be it can be restarted now, so it's it's okay uh, because um, when everything is done, uh, only after then I replace the started sequence. Mm. Uh, so now, if you reboot, there is still the ins uh, installation started sequence in place. I know? see. So, uh, so yeah. Let me let me tell you, it was quite um, challenging to to make the installation part actually because uh, there is no OS files yet, mm. and still you need uh, oh oh something happened object not found. On, still, uh, yeah, when it tries to protect something, it yeah, sends the permissions, the file permissions. Anyway, uh, so. You need to install something, you need to extract ADFs, but without having the OS files yet, you know? So that was quite challenging to find some software which which can work, you know, even without uh, without OS files in place. Yeah, yet. yeah. Uh, hello, drummer. Uh, yeah, in, in the name of science. <laughs> that would be interesting sometimes. Uh, but not uh, when you are doing a, a live stream, because uh, people might uh, get bored easily, <laughs> I guess. Um, so, okay, because even if the protect f failed, the process uh, continues. I see again object not found. Um, okay. Here is what's, what's happening there, like... But the installation uh, that, uh, didn't fail. No, now now it's copying now it's copying to the SD card. You see, it will be interesting here to to see um, in a, in a way the the steps uh, where exactly it fails. I mean, uh, did it fail when I extracted the roadshow because I gave it uh, at the wrong uh, package? Did it fail for the Picasso or something? Let me make a let me make a screenshot of this. Because I can find out, you know, thanks to those, um, thanks to those signs. Ah, I see. I, you can, you know, I can, I can find out which part of of installation script failed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, Hello, Ray Samika. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Today we are. Uh, I don't know if you uh, watching the stream from the start, but we are uh, working with uh, the AmiKit. The latest version of AmiKit available for the Python system. So we are doing all the installation from the scratch, and we ex are experimenting here with Jan, who is the developer and uh, maintainer of the the package of the AmiKit. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting for me having uh, someone with me in the in the stream after so many years. Amiga OS has been installed. Let's reboot and select the screen mode. Okay, press enter to reboot. Now, the files that we put in the boot uh, partition, are they deleted? Uh, I'm sorry? The files that we have in uh, the boot partition. Uh, no, 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 no. No, nothing is deleted. deleted. Okay. Yeah. So we have here to select the screen mode. I will go with the 1080p 32-bit uh, so I'm going to save it. Press enter. I like that uh, effect that you put every letter one by one to be written and uh, all the messages that guide the, the user what is happening and uh, what is going to happen next. Aris Amika says, let's debug Amikid. Woo! <laughs> 
So, we are in. Now I don't know if there is any audio. Uh, hello and welcome. One last step to complete the AmiKit installation. Uh, set up the network and go online, then enter your details into the live update app and download the AmiKit update. Set up the network first. Uh, so don't don't set up the network because now this um, this network is for Amig uh, Amiga network cards only. Okay, so we need the driver first to be uh, yeah. copied. So what do you what do you do now is uh, double click uh, on empty Amikit desktop, and it will bring you the list of devices. Yes. This is something that uh, comes from the directory Opus 5, right? Because yeah. if I am correctly, yes, here we use now go to the, boot. the directory Opus. And we have here uh, WFI, WPA, the okay. could now, not be identified launch file type sniff no, out in this gate. Sorry? No, no, no. Uh, uh, can cancel, cancel this. Uh, just mark the LZX archive. Just mark it once, and then press right uh, mouse button and select compression. Uh, 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 no, no. Now press on the um, on the empty empty emikit area desktop. Yeah. Okay. Compression, LZX, uh, extracts archive to extracts archives, I guess. And yeah. select destination, let's say RAM. To RAM. Okay. So it extracts the, the archive there, just fine. Okay, now go to the RAM. And we have here, we have a lot of stuff. For example, this C. Um, and if I open the AMI kit, I guess. So now you are doing a usage, uh, a user uh, experience, uh, Jan, to, to see what I'm going to do wrong. Uh, so I'm going to change the view as uh, show all. And we need to copy the the C folder into C, I guess, because it has all the files. The this package doesn't have the an install an installer, right? Uh, no, no. Wireless manager. All, all you need is just to uh, yeah copy copy the files there and replace uh, all. Okay. So what I need to do right now is go and ah should I do let me think should I uh, go and take the devs um, press s storage t yeah 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 and just just drag it and move it to to emikit exactly and like that replace all not not t but vb VB startup. Sorry? You forgot uh, WB start. Okay. Close close the wizard. Close the wizard because you cannot over overwrite it because it's um it's this launched. one. This one. Right? Yeah, but close the, uh, not the disk info. And close I see the stream uh, uh, with a bit delay, you know, so, okay. so I can so comment should right I, away. Should I close the network wizard? Yes, yes, close it. Uh, close it. Uh, it has back and that closes that. Okay. And again, I need the devs, prefs, s, storage, t, w, s. T, not, not t, not t. Not the t. Uh, the env? What do we have in ENV? No, not, not the ENV, right? So we have devs, prefs, S, storage, and WB startup. 
right. and copy them inside Amikit. Replace all. And I guess we have that done. If we go to prefs, we should see, let me see, uh, and archive, so all. Do we have here the uh, Amikit network? We do. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think we are fine. And, and now we can reboot. I will reboot. So I'm going to get again the... Nice! <laughs> uh, so I'm going to get again the um, question, the wizard for the network, right? Yeah. And right. now uh, there is a new wizard and it will uh, show you the Wi-Fi Pi device which you can choose. And uh, this um, this driver will utilize the Wi-Fi module on your Raspberry Pi itself. Um, again, <clears throat> the Emi kit was released in uh, October 2023, and this this driver was not available at, at the time. So, yeah, the wizard, the wizard, the old wizard supports Amiga network cards, uh, which are uh, slow and expensive you know <laughs> but it was the only it was the only solution for so far to have emica emica connected yeah but now with this <clears throat> with this driver you can you can use the wi-fi uh, of your raspberry pi and it's super fast it so, is it is and uh, even if you have a 5g network on your uh, uh, lan you can use that to get even faster um I set up the network first. Wi-Fi card, I guess. Uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, wait, <clears throat> I, I'm I'm just waiting for uh... the stream. Eh? Um, so I'm now in a requester that says enter your network name and password. Current network name not set. So I have to enter name and password. So Wait a sec. Uh, I think I think there should be this uh, Wi-Fi Pi actually, but it it's not there. Did we did we copy uh, this uh, new wizard actually? This uh, is for the network card, you know. Yes. Uh, the Wi-Fi Pi was was missing. Let's let's extract the this uh, archive again and check. Yes. Okay. Give me a sec. Cancel cancel this one and close it. Let me do that again. Now you went through the through the Amiga network card setup, you know, so so you have to finish this. No worries. Uh, there is no Ireland in there. <laughs> so I'm going to go with uh, uh, with Greece. And uh, network enabled reboot might be required. Okay, I will exit and try again the uh, go to the boot like like we did earlier. Mm -hmm. Select the LZX uh, compression LZX. Actually, I will extract it straight inside the Ami Amikit. Is that fine with you? Yes, yes. Instead of RAM and then copy. Let me try that again. Extract. Uh, all. Now I'm sure that we did that correctly. 
rebooting and let's see how it goes. Okay, uh, and now now you can actually press the right, right mouse button over and oh, you reboot. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little bit fast. Uh, C277 uh, says, uh, wow, very good looking. Yeah. Uh, Jan has uh, always done a lot of uh, work on the way that uh, Amiket looks. And uh, actually, Rafa Mika says exactly the same, looking perfect. Uh, it's lo it looks quite elegant, I, s I would say. Thank you. So, we have again the network wizard okay, showing up see. and says set up network first and then mm -hmm. one button says complete the installation later. So, I'm going to set up the network first. Okay. And right now I have the network wizard that says that gives me uh, options Wi-Fi Pi, Wi-Fi card, LAN card and yeah. I copied my driver. So, I go Wi-Fi Pi. Yeah. Set up your 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Amiga network. Current uh, network name not set. We are going well right now, I think. So yeah, I'm going yeah. to go enter name and password. And I need to enter the, the Wi Fi name. Let me check my mobile uh, and get that information. So I go with. Uh, Okay, and now it needs the password. That's this. That's the hard thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me get the password. And before that, I will pixelize the uh, arm kit. You don't need to because I made it smart, so uh, the password is entered invisibly. Ah, okay, yeah, I see that now, yes. But now I can't check if it is the right one. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we will see. Don't worry, because then then you can go to NVARC sys and check the wireless dot press file. Okay. And the password password is entered there. Yes. So you can always, you can always double check. Now I guess you will be going through the through the rest of the of of the network installation, which means local and time settings. And then you should be online. So, if not, since we if not, just reboot, reboot and and it should work. Okay, uh, we don't have right now the network, right? Let uh, me... not yet. Le uh, so click, uh, times correct. Uh, click internet set uh, sync, so it will sync on the next boot. Ah, okay. Silly me. I didn't do that. No, no, it's okay. Reboot. Rebooting in five seconds. And you can cancel the reboot here. Okay, that's good. So, uh, inside the boot, you have the... I see the version here. It is from um, September 24, 2023. The MU68. If right. someone wants to add the newer version, this needs to be done uh, manually because this one is uh, 1.0.0 RC2, right? Uh, so right. since then there was uh, a newer version. Or this is something that is done through the updater as well. Uh, you don't need to worry about MO68 file, uh, files at all because they are they are updated uh, through my live update, you know, so I can deliver even new MU68 files with, with, the, uh, with the update. So the user doesn't need to do it manually, right? No, no. Since no. we have the customer ID and we have the email, 
that we add in this uh, screen. Uh, then you get uh, the updates, which updates uh, Amiga files as well, and the MU68, which is cool. Yep. Uh, Drummer says, uh, no Linux is refreshing, Aris Amiga. Uh, so, yeah, let's see. Um, would you like me, Jan, to do the live update? Or should uh, we see the... So, so uh, first, uh, enter, enter your details there. Uh, and the customer ID? Yeah, customer ID and your email. Okay. And then uh, I see your network is still offline. So uh, yes. So then we're gonna check uh, this NWRC file. Okay. If you enter your password correctly, and if you did, uh, and it still doesn't work, uh, I have some tips what what we can do to make the network. It might be a problem with my uh, local network because I guess it is uh, set up to use DHCP, right? Mm -hmm. But DHCP should be fine. But if not, uh, we can always edit the the, the driver so it uses um, your static IP address. Mm -hmm. And I will show you how. Normally, well, this Wi-Fi Pi driver is still uh, still in alpha state, mm -hmm. so. Uh, there might be some problems. For me, it works out of the box, you know, when it's installed like this. If not, on some systems, you need to enter a static IP address. Yeah, I see what you mean. I had that uh, when I uh, installed the Amiga OS 3.2 on my mm -hmm. system, I, ma I needed to go with the um, with a static uh, IP because it didn't work. It is the same system. So mm -hmm. we might need to do uh, so here. Let me uh, show all. And if I go to the NVARC, if I remember correctly, sorry, the NVARC is inside prefs. Again, uh, again, you can, you can double click on empty area of desktop and the devices will be shown. Yes, exactly. You are, you are right. And go to and sys, right? Envark sys, and uh, the file is called wireless.prefs. Wireless.prefs. Give me a sec to check that. Uh, read. But watch out, now you will show your password, you know? So. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I censored the screen and double check the, the password. Uh, because, you know, it is so big, this kind of passwords. And we managed to make ourselves, our lives difficult with all this stuff. So it seems right. You know what is the most difficult thing? <laughs> like, uh, there is uh, Amiga GPT uh, program. Ah, uh, yeah. Pre installed the Amiga. And if you want to use it, you need to enter. Uh, GPT API, which is like 30, 30 signs long thing, yeah. <laughs> which you cannot, which you cannot copy and paste, you know, to Amiga because of you, course not. You, so <laughs> yeah. So the, I'm struggling with. the password is right. So I would suggest to go with a static uh, IP. Is there a tool to to do yeah. that? Uh, Again, uh, double click on the desktop and go to devs, uh, networks. Uh, networks, okay. And we have and then, here Wi Fi device. Yeah, and now um, right click, right click on it and select edit. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not networks. Um, uh, some other, go back. Net interfaces. Net interfaces, right. Read. And here we have, uh, this is read, we need to edit that. 
so I will need an editor. Uh, uh, right click and hold over the file. Right click and hold. Open it. Okay, great. That's great. Reddit. Okay. And uh, we need to edit here. Configure DHCP. Let me uh, remove it. And here I set up the address to be something like that. Configure auto. That's fine. I don't think I need to change anything else. From and you know it's your IP address, right? Sorry? It's the, it's dot thirty two, right? Yeah. It's one IP. Okay. It's, it's not. I don't have it specific for this uh, machine, uh, but I think this is uh, free. This one is free, and then I need also to change the. I think I need to go to the road show. To set up the where it is, uh, not that uh, the the the. the, the uh, gateway and this stuff. Uh, I don't think so. Try, try first. Try if you save it. Uh, uh, okay. By reboot and try, try again. Let's try that. Uh, Javier, welcome. Font bigger as I, I, we don't see. I am on laptop. Hello, everyone. Uh, Javier, yeah, we are. Um, Installing the AMI kit, so now I'm going to try and change the font to be bigger so that you guys can see it just fine. Or should I change the resolution? What would you prefer? Jan, do you have any preference? Uh -huh. <clears throat> Step by step, let's fix the network first. Uh, you see uh, on the ta uh, on the screen bar, it says the network end. offline. Yeah, network offline. Okay, let let me try something. Uh, if I open a new cell, since this is a uh, Amiga OS three, right? You don't mm -hmm. have any application uh, installed like uh, the roadie for the no, road show. No, no, I, I, uh, uh, there's no roadie, but I would like to include it in the next update. Hmm, okay. Uh, but roadie would help, yeah. Directory Opus uh, looks great, says uh, Citu. Does it feel faster? Yeah, it's it's pretty fast, I think. Uh, although this uh, the Director Opus 5 is not my preference, yeah, it is uh, pretty fast. Javier says, by the way, thanks for docking replies. Ah, okay, don't worry, don't worry at all. And if you need more information, Javier, please let me know. Uh, Amiki Tatter, what system machine? This is the 1200 that I'm using the with the Python, with a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Although that uh, for using uh, the for having the best experience with uh, Amikit, you will need a Raspberry Pi 4. It works pretty nice on uh, Raspberry Pi 3. Um, so what I'm thinking right now uh, is to show net net status. Uh, uh, did, if, did you did you enter the the um, network name correctly? It's it's also in this virus prefs. It is in yeah the wireless prefs. I think I did yes. Uh, you see, I have the I have pink uh, with the router, mm -hmm. so we are connected, and um, the problem here is the DNS because if I do if I ping to a website, mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. It will not find it. <laughs> so what I need to do is to go in devs, and uh, let me think. Uh, 
uh, in devs they also install some files internet inside the internet folder which is uh, it has a routes networks name resolution mm -hmm. uh, let me open with like that and here it says name server This is something that if your uh, DHCP works just fine, it should work as well. So right now I'm giving the my router IP for the uh, name server for uh, the DNS. And uh, let me think, do I need to change anything else? Networks? I don't think. What about the routes? The routes, no, uh, the routes are, let me show you. The routes is something like uh, if I know, if I want to say uh, the IP for this one is for dot one dot one is, uh, I want to give it a name, my uh, uh, route dot com. And uh, put it that on that file on the routes. That uh, no, actually, what I'm saying is stupid. It's the host. So yeah, routes default local host. Let's say default the my router IP. Yeah, let's save that as well and try the. Uh, net shutdown okay and now I can do add net interface and to find what we have to put there we have to go to uh, devs net interfaces we have Wi-Fi Pi so add net interface Wi-Fi Pi and that restarts the roadshow uh, and if I do ping right now, it works with my router. Let's try um, a website. And it works with the website as well. So logically, right now, and you <laughs> see at the top bar, it says network online. So we are online right now. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. That's uh, that's good. So we are fine. Cool. Okay. Um, now let me launch a live update. Live it's, update. Uh, it's in the menu. So mm -hmm. if you uh, right click and select M Kit, select live update. And then click on the check button, right? Yes. Yes. So it connects to your servers right now and checks what kind of updates are there. Yeah. Uh, have, uh, let me cut on the chat. Uh, Cito says uh, it looks fast, maybe faster than Workbench. We can. That's the thing with Abikit that you can change if you don't like the uh, uh, Opus Five, you can change to Workbench. And if you want uh, also to experiment with the Scalos, uh, you can change to Scalos as well. This is included, Jan, in this version, right? Um, you can switch to Workbench and Scalos on, uh, on Windows, Mac, Raspberry and Linux version for sure. Over here, I think I didn't include it mm -hmm. because everything is set around directory opus 5. Ah, okay, okay. And again, if you switch to something else, um, especially Skelos, which is not um, um, configured so well, you know, yeah. because I don't, I don't use it. And if somebody switched, then I got many, many uh, feedback like, this doesn't work, that doesn't work, you know, so this was another thing that uh, that I skipped. So, okay. why is 
still connecting, you know? Are you sure the network works? Or maybe reboot, you know, because it shouldn't take so long. Yeah, it shouldn't. Let me reboot. Okay. Um. Uh, I see. Uh, Javier says, I remember a time ago configuring MTCP in my MIGI to get online. Uh, yeah, it, it was uh, quite a challenge, right? Back then. What TCP IP stack uh, does it use? Uh, Javier, right now I'm using the Roadshow. When you do the installation for the AmiKit, uh, you can uh, give it the LHA file from Roadshow and that uh, does the installation automatically on your system. So this is uh, using Roadshow 1.14. Right. Let me try again with a live update. When the system is online and uh, the new update is detected, the live update will start uh, automatically. Oh, okay. So when you you boot, you do a check uh, automatically, right? Yes. Unless there is kind there is some kind of uh, issue on my side with the connection to the to the, your server, like I couldn't uh, download and. Uh, the file myself and you had to send it over. Yeah, it's strange that it cannot connect. Uh, can you tell me... Do you have a new roadshow actually? 1.15 somewhere. Maybe we can install that. I might actually. Let me check. I think I have it. Let me, let me check on my side if whether my server is online just to just to be sure. Yeah it is. Can you give me the domain that you use? To, to ping it? It's emikit.emiga.sk Ah, it's the same like your website. Or um, or actually, wait a sec, update.emiga.sk Okay. Update.emiga.sk yeah, mm -hmm. when I ping it, uh, I can't get any... Although that I get for the AmiKit, it, mm -hmm. uh, I get uh, back the information from the ping. The mm -hmm. For the update, I don't get anything. And it's a different uh, IP, I see. So yeah, something is... Probably from my side, something is wrong with the, the way I access that uh, server. Mm -hmm. Unless if your server doesn't reply to ping. Let me try on uh, my computer. Works from my side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be my problem. So I would say... Uh, Let's have a look on the the rest of the the system. What do you think? Well, it's not it's not very useful now because um, as you can see, uh, the taskbar taskbar is missing and other stuff, and uh, this will be delivered to Emikit as a part of activation update. Ah, also, that's so why it really says not activated download yeah, update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why you don't see a taskbar and other stuff, which are uh, which is essential stuff actually for having it. So can you somehow solve this network problem so you can so you can download the updates from my site or what can be the reason that you cannot access this update? Let, let me have a look on my Linux machine. Um, if I can ping that. URL. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Ping update dot amica dot sk. You see, even on my Linux machine, it doesn't reply at all. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it might be a network uh, problem from the ISP for me. For some reason. And it works from my on my side. Yeah, I think I can solve it. Wait. Yeah, I have an idea. How? Oh, I'm curious. Let me try and connect it to my mobile. Okay. <laughs> because I'm going to change uh, ISP. So let me try and connect it to my mobile and I think it will work. Sorry guys for all this stuff because uh, this is something that I haven't tried yet uh, because I wanted everything to happen uh, online uh, live in front of you so if everything anything fails you know who's fo- to fall uh, to, to blame uh, so let's go to um, uh, again and park and sees I'm going to change the wireless uh, perhaps open so with Reddit. You created the hotspot, right, on your phone? Sorry? Yes, a hotspot. Hot. Amiga connected to a hotspot. Wow. That's interesting because you can have it uh, whenever you go to any uh, any Amiga event. You can have your Amiga with you and uh, connect it to your computer. Your Sorry, your mobile and have it online again. So the future is here, you know, Amiga <laughs> connected. A phone. <laughs> exactly. How cool is that? Okay. And then you need to change this um, IP certificate address as well, right? Um, yeah, I might need to do that to change it to DHCP, I guess. Hopefully, it, it will work. Let me do that. Uh, okay. Uh, and um, Please bear with me until uh, everything uh, is working. I wonder why this is happening though. To I don't understand why this uh, your server is uh, blocked for me for some reason. Yeah, strange. First time I see that. And uh, networks? No, not networks. Net interfaces. Let me change. Uh, Write it. Or just kill neighbors with Wi Fi. <laughs> That's what I read in comments. Neighbors Wi-Fi. If if I, if only I knew that. 
so I need to change the name resolution as well so I'm going to remove the name server this is going to, to uh, get through the DHCP and also the routes yeah. actually I, I learned something new from you I had no idea that you can drag and drop a file to Reddit to edit, edit it, you know? Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> Reddit is a great editor. It's it's really awesome. I always uh, use it on my uh, setups. Uh, we sort here says, what's the address for the update server? I cannot ping update amikit amiga.sk. Uh, remove the amikit from that uh, URL. It's update.amiga.sk. Try that. Okay, let's see. Network offline remains offline. Let me see. Oh, it gave me the update automatically. Or did I put, uh, press something? Oh, you're offline. So. Yeah, still offline. And do you have any Amiga card? Uh, I have. Any net yeah. network card? Yeah, 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 I have. Uh, we can use that as well. Um, but since it comes from the same ISP, I'm afraid that it will fail. It might fail. So let me try that. Um, net shut down. Okay, add net interface. Wi Fi Pi. Okay, timed out. So... What does it mean? That means that uh, something I have wrong in the wireless uh, preferences. Let me mm -hmm. check that again. Hey, we soldier, welcome. It works for you, we soldier. It works for you, right? For yep. me, <laughs> that's that's a problem that I, I, it is from my side. So I guess that uh, most people will not have that uh, issue. Everyone else than than me is not going to have that issue. Uh, Do you know the SSID is uh, uh, is case sensitive, right? Yeah, I think so. I think I had a letter uh, wrong. Really? Let's see now. But hey, I'm really glad <clears throat> that you know what you're doing, you know, with these uh, editing files of routes and, and, and network, because I would have no idea. I'm, I'm really, when it comes to Amiga networking, uh, I'm really a noob. Uh, the, the other time I did a, a stream where I showed, uh, all, yeah, we are online. Uh, I showed the all these commands that I used today and uh, explained to, to everyone so yeah I think it is crucial to know all this stuff uh, because sometimes okay the, the roadie and all these applications are great but if something goes wrong and you don't know for example you see uh, with one network the network for my mobile DHCP works just fine but with my router it doesn't work 
always okay. so yeah uh, now I have access it seems to work so I did to I need to uh, download now right yeah let's see if you entered the, the registration details correctly <laughs> yeah I re let's see <laughs> Ah, I did. I did one thing right <laughs> today. So it downloads the update. Yeah. And, and then uh, it will be and then it will be activated. Uh, the twelve point three update is activation update. Okay. And then um, I released when twelve point four and five updates. Uh, meanwhile. Uh, what is really recommended is that once you uh, do the update, uh, to back up the, the SD card again. Ah, OK. Uh, because then it will be activated, it will be installed, it will, um, you have all the network set up, you know, so. Yes. When, when anything goes wrong, you don't start from scratch. I get, I get it, I get it, yes. So yeah, that's, that's uh, good to mention. So right now it downloads the file and it uh, saves at the downloads folder, I guess. And um, these updates also uh, include the new MO68 files, but not the latest one. You okay, know, yeah. Uh, because the new one was released meanwhile. Yes, of course. I, I found it uh, interesting that uh, under the same version they are doing uh, new releases without uh, changing the the version number. So I saw really? the other time that uh, they did uh, two uh, updates uh, mm -hmm. of the MU68 and uh, it's still uh, 1.0.0. Mm -hmm. But I guess uh, these uh, updates were not... Uh, something uh, major, uh, otherwise they should, uh, I guess, mention to everyone uh, what exactly the, the changes are. So it downloads the, the latest one, uh, and those are pretty big uh, updates. I mean, the 12.5.0 is uh, almost 25 uh, megabytes, which, is, which means that uh, you did a lot of uh, changes there. And that's good that you explain all the stuff that uh, changed. You have a log here, so that people can oh. know what exactly changed. Yeah. But sometimes you include scam VM, and uh, and the archive is suddenly big, you know, because yeah. it's a big, uh, big software. Yeah. So uh, now when you reboot, uh, uh, switch to switch to native screen because the update uh, will yeah. take place. I guess, I guess, but let's see. So it was a problem from my side, as you can see. Your server is fine, it's working great. But good to know, you know, um, that's a very strange problem that you couldn't access my update. Uh, as, right. as Javier says, uh, my router is an Atari router. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so where is the update happening? On native or RTG screen? I don't see anything on native. Let me switch to the RTG. Yeah, RTG. RTG, okay. Cool. I so you see again the message, back up your uh, micro SD card after the update. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, this is um, pretty easy for everyone to update their system, I guess. Uh, and what happens <coughs> if I go and uh, update one of the components myself, let's say the eye game. I guess when you do the update, do you have any uh, checks in place to see if the uh, actual uh, installed uh, version of uh, any program is the newest one or do you do the update no matter what exactly is installed on uh, the hard disk? The later, the later is the case. <laughs> oh, okay. I just delivered, I just delivered the update, uh, and the uh, the files which are in in the archive. So I'm not checking for the versions. Okay. 
so uh -huh. uh, yeah so if i i wanted to have uh, some applications maintained by me for example the the i game i should uh, copy that to a different place in uh, inside amikit yeah or basically what you do is that uh, first you update Emiki to the latest version and then then you update uh, whatever you you want. You uh, for example, um, this update delivered uh, the MU68 files which are a few months old. So if you before the update you copy the new, uh, the latest MU68, now it was replaced, you know, with older one. So uh now you would have to update your emo 68 files manually or wait for my next update you know? <laughs> okay. so and now you can see emikit in its full beauty yeah. so there is a taskbar you know everything there are fault file types installed everything works so now if you double double click any file it will be recognized you know and uh, just be careful because you didn't <laughs> You didn't back up your SD card. Ah, yeah. So okay. If anything goes wrong, you would have to start from from your backup. From the from scratch. The from the scratch. But, uh, <clears throat> but I believe you. <laughs> what's what's the Zeus? Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, EX08. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Javier says, does it have some backup recovery mode? Uh, backup your SD card and recover from the image if you if you want that's in my opinion mm -hmm. that's the best backup that you can do because you have everything all the partitions and everything in one uh, image and then you can easily uh, restore it i don't know if you Jan, have any other proposal um yeah <clears throat> if you make iso that's that's the best thing you know <clears throat> i i'm not a corporation uh, like Apple or Microsoft, I cannot do any recovery software or or script. I mean, I can, but then I wouldn't have time for uh, something else, you know. So, mm -hmm. if there is an easy solution like you, you make a, a raw uh, backup of your ISO of, of your card to ISO, do it. I think there are some tools in Aminet that uh, are based. They they their job is to do uh, backups. Only. Yeah, yeah, but not the one-to-one -one backup, you know, not, yeah. not the card, because this card, if you <clears throat> if you check the desktop icons, I can explain, there is there is RAM, uh, there is MAKIT, which is uh, where all the programs, including the all uh, system files, are installed, then there is stuff, which is empty, but still, uh, still, uh, it's an Amiga file system, mm -hmm. and as you can, as you can see, uh, the FET, uh, oh, so stuff is not empty, I put something there, <laughs> okay. Yeah, there is, um, uh, there are some uh, videos, there are, there is music, yeah. games. Yeah. And then uh, you have a FET partition, mm -hmm. and uh, <clears throat> this FET partition is the boot partition, uh, where you copied all the, all the MEGOS 3.2 files and, and other stuff is hidden. So you don't mess it, mess mess up with that, <clears throat> but you can still access it uh, if you double click on the desktop. You know, the, the, all the av available devices will be shown. Yeah. But I, but from the desktop it's hidden. Uh, the reason is that uh, the the um, the boot partitions partition includes MO68 files, which are crucial for booting uh, your Amiga. So I didn't, that's why it's hidden. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> but there is this black FET partition, which is <clears throat> FET32 uh, file system, which you can use uh, for uh, file transfer. So if you if you plug your SD card to, to Windows, Mac or whatever, this FET partition will be readable and you can <clears throat> you can copy files there and then you can easily read it from, from uh, Amiga. That's great. And regarding Zeus, what is uh, what is Zeus? You're Greek. You should know what is Zeus. <laughs> no? Yeah, yeah. But this is oh, more you... more for Zeus. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, on the Windows version uh, or Mac or Linux, uh, there is a Morpheus, hmm. and yeah. uh, and this one is just 
Zeus. <laughs> but I put the morph, you know, in a, in a bracket. So uh, this program is actually you can change some uh, some um, uh, system settings of Emikit or um, um, just check. You can uh, select desktop desktop settings to see what you can change there. You can change themes. You can change the look of the of the windows. Hmm. Um, Let's try uh, try something. There is uh, blue. Which is a theme looking like the um, Amiga OS 4, I think. Check and see. Green. Apply apply the blue theme and uh, for example, and then then reboot, or it will reboot automatically. Uh, Wish Solder uh, asks in Linux, you could create a script to back up the imp important folders. Uh, would it, would it, uh, would that be possible in Amiga DOS? It would uh, back up to the same SD card, uh, though. Uh, look, with Amiga Do with Amiga OS, you can even uh, mount uh, FTP uh, servers as uh, hard disks on your system. You can mount uh, SMB uh, uh, serve folders which are um, folders that you can share from Windows or other servers that support the Samba. Uh, and um, there are applications that can take backups. You can say, take this uh, folder and back it up into that uh, hard disk, which is not always on your system. And uh, these kind of things are available on Aminet. So yeah, there, there are these kind of solutions. The only thing uh, that I uh, consider about uh, when you do uh, backups to other file systems, like the NTFS, for example, on Windows, or the uh, EXT4 on Linux or anything, you are missing some of the file permissions on of the, the Amiga OS because they are not 100% compatible. So some applications might fail to, to work after you restore your backup. That's why people say that if you want to backup, do uh, archive the files into LHA and then copy them to the to any other server. Uh, but also taking an image of the SD card is for me the best backup because it saves all the partitions, all the files as they are and you don't have any any problem and then you can uh, archive that partition, that image file and uh, save even more uh, space on your hard disk. Uh, Javier asks web browser, what kind of web browsers we have in Amikit? Uh, uh, so we check, have internet. Check, Sorry. Check, check the taskbar. There is a Firefox icon on the taskbar. Right on the taskbar, you know. Uh, you don't. Uh, ah, don't okay. Click. This one, AmiFox. Um, Okay. Put exception host name resolution for AmiFox distributor uh, M code M do uh, uh, dot org. Okay, failed. Ah, uh, uh, we are offline. That's why. Uh -huh. Let me check again. Maybe it disconnected from the phone. Let me let me see. Let's uh, uh, no. Uh, let's uh, show. Mm -hmm. Let's 
let's try that again okay so if I go to Amiga news dot de it works just fine and if I go to amikit.amika.sk let's try that again uh, tethering times out of by default tethering times what do you mean to do? Javier says your mobile data limit is reached <laughs> but we didn't download much come on uh, let's see so as you can see with Amifox you have uh, even uh, great uh, great websites like yours uh, Jan are pretty pretty visible uh, but also there are other there is uh, NetSurf I guess this is the SDL version of the NetSurf right? Uh, I'm yes. not sure yeah 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 that's the one uh, Amigans yes and um, there is also a web is this the one with the SSL support yeah yeah I think so the li the latest okay I did a, a stream uh, with only about a browser so I, uh, I have them fresh in my mind that's why I'm asking about that And uh, there is also eyebrows, uh, guys. But I guess it is the demo version. So yeah. if you have your key, you can uh, add it and uh, use use it with a nice theme here and uh, pretty nice uh, buttons. Uh, one thing that I don't know if it is visible on. Uh, your screen guys it is that everywhere in Amikit you have 32 bit uh, great looking icons uh, anti aliasing in the in the fonts so and the whole uh, look and feel of the Amikit is really modern a modern operating system it's not like you are using a play in Amiga OS 3.1 or something and uh, I really like the the uh, that you took care every little uh, detail. In my opinion, that's what makes uh, Amikit uh, stand out from any other, uh, let's say, similar uh, distribution. That's why I like it much more than anything else. And th there is a trans transparency also, as you can see on the taskbar. It's transparent or if you click the start bar it's also transparent yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, actually it's quite fast even on raspberry 3 yeah it's so, fine um, yeah i'm surprised it's 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 really fine because all this stuff um uh like transparency true type fonts uh, anti-aliased phones you know and uh, and everything takes a lot of uh, resources yes. so um, that's why MAKIT was previously available only for Windows, Mac, Linux and Raspberry Pi uh, because it was too slow for uh, classic Amiga even with the fast uh, accelerator yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. And I got, uh, during the years, I got requests to make it work on uh, on this kind of hardware configuration, but I was hesitating to do that because that would mean a lot of sacrifices, you know, and uh, and um, Amikit is actually meant to be like a modern retro Amiga system, so I really wanted to make it nice, up to date, um, user friendly, you know, with a lot of colors and be uh, bells and whistles and these transparency things and stuff like that. So, uh, 
knocking it down to I don't know twenty two hundred fifty six colors or something like that would go against my uh, vision how a it should look like yeah you know so so it it should be like high end Amiga uh, with a lot of programs pre-installed with a unified look and fortunately finally with PyStorm it is now available for real Amiga. You know, I tried on Vampire, uh, and I had to do some sacrifices there. For example, on Vampire, there is not this uh, fancy taskbar uh, because it's too slow even for Vampire. So on uh, Vampire version, uh, I used um, a native directory opus start bar. It's functional. It works. But it doesn't look so nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I don't think that uh, uh, you need to do sacrifices if it if it doesn't uh, feel uh, the end product. If it doesn't, if it isn't like you uh, imagine that or you uh, want it to be, it, you shouldn't do any sacrifices. Uh, because hardware is out there, fast hardware is out there. People. Uh, yep. Are using that uh, a lot by a uh, new hardware. I mean, um, I don't know how fast it is on a O60, for example, at uh, 100 megahertz. But the uh -huh. the Pystorm is pretty pretty cheap and uh, pretty powerful. So I think that if someone wants to uh, run it on uh, the classic Amigas, uh, there are solutions. Other than that, there are emulation. There is emulation, so which is pretty fast. I mean, yeah. it is better to have uh, a really nice environment to to use than uh, make sacrifices to uh, remove things just because they are not that fast in uh, in a specific uh, hardware. And I think that if the if we have uh, at some point uh, software that people would like to to run uh, that pushes a lot the the hardware, people are going to make even f faster solutions for the the Amiga. Otherwise, there's no no big uh, there's no sense to to push the hardware further. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> for example. Uh, PyStorm with Raspberry Pi 3 achieves around 700 pips, you know, uh, and with Raspberry Pi 4 it's uh, over, over 1000. And uh, what's what's the speed of uh, um, Motorola 60? It's like 50 pips or something like that, you know, and uh, Vampire is 200. Hmm. 20, 20 MIPS, and it works fine on Vampire with those sacrifices, but uh, on Motorola 60, mm, difficult. Difficult, and uh, it maybe it should be possible if the hardware, if that card is cheap, you know. But how much is uh, Motorola 60 nowadays? You know, 500 euros. You, or, you you want uh, you need uh, three hundred euros only for the CPU at least three hundred, maybe even more now. You know, so <laughs> so uh, imagine I would spend half a year fine tuning everything for the sixty, and then nobody will use it because it costs five hundred to one thousand euros exactly. just to get the hardware, and still and still you don't have RTG. You have exactly. just fast fast CPU. Yeah. So then you have to buy a graphics card. You know, and oof, that would. <laughs> we so. soldier uh, is right. Uh, he says personally, I really like it uh, on uh, Raspberry Pi, with the ability to boot straight to the Ami Kit uh, workbench. It feels just uh, like uh, still having an Amiga. And actually, you are pretty right on that. I have seen a lot of people uh, taking expansions for uh, uh, this kind of keyboards for the 1200, for example, uh, to to convert it to a USB just because they wanted inside the case of the 1200 to have a Raspberry Pi using the original keyboard 
and that is something that you can make uh, to work just fine and run uh, as you said uh, uh, AmiKit with uh, inside the Raspberry Pi and have an Amiga and you have that feeling uh, uh, it is it is great I think but you know what's funny uh, if you run AmiKit on uh, um, Raspberry Pi using Emiberry emulator it achieves around 900 mix thousand maybe a little bit more uh, when overclocked mm -hmm. And the same, the same Raspberry Pi 4 in Pi Store, the Amiga, is faster than that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and, and that makes sense because uh, what they did uh, with the uh, MU68, they, as much as I understand, yeah. because I'm not an expert, they wrote code uh, on the bare metal, which doesn't uh, have anything to do with any Linux uh, installation there that takes resources, it doesn't have anything, any other layers of software between their code and the the actual hardware. And that means that they can uh, use every single resource that is available. Um, and let's be honest, with the MU68 you are doing very specific three, yeah. four, five uh, things. When you have a Linux installation and then you have the emulator and inside that you run your software, you have a lot of layers of software that uh, are running and uh, instead of five things, you are doing 5,000 things. <laughs> and uh, th that uh, that is logical. So yeah, I, I agree with you. If you have the hardware, if you have a 1200, if you have a 500 or a 600 or something that supports a Pi Storm, installing a Pi Storm and a Raspberry Pi is the best solution out there. But, but meanwhile, Raspberry Pi 5 was released <laughs> and Emikit runs even faster on that using Emiberry emulator. It can achieve around 2000 MIPS. So <clears throat> imagine when there is a Pi Storm for a, a Raspberry Pi 5, uh, that would be like <laughs> yeah. super fun. <laughs> you know? And then... But, <clears throat> And but then... I'm afraid. I'm afraid that, um, as as far as I remember, for Raspberry Pi Five, you you will need a new Pi Storm card. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, probably. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, again, it... it's not so expensive, you know, as as Motorola uh, uh, accelerator, accelerator cards. So if it's again like 50, 60 use, like, wow, it's a fast and cheap and compatible. So the first time I connected PyStorm into my Amiga and I ran AmiKit on it, I was like, wow, now is it, is it really my AmiKit running on this Amiga I had when I was 15? <laughs> it's the same Amiga, <laughs> you know? And, and it runs really fast, so I'm I'm amazed by this piece, Python uh, yeah. thing. Yeah, the, the guys did a, a tremendous job over there. Yeah. Uh, Javier says, future update stuff you are thinking to add? Um, for future updates, basically, <clears throat> even though when uh, there is no update... Oh, uh, the screensaver started. <laughs> uh, so. Even though it seems like Emikit is not updated uh, in a few months, I'm always scanning uh, Eminet and other uh, other uh, software updates. So in next update, what you can be sure is that uh, everything what appeared uh, in last few months will be included and updated, including MO68 files. And, uh, and then I will add some features on on the way, uh, I don't. I still don't know uh, what kind of features, but um, what really impressed me recently was that on Discord, on Emiga Discord, mm -hmm. uh, a guy who created uh, Emiga GPT, mm -hmm. the, the developer of Emiga GPT, was able to connect Amiga with Siri. And he was able to execute command commands on Amiga by his voice. So he <laughs> said, nice. so he said something to Siri, and Siri executed 
<laughs> with a kid, with a kid, Amiga, I was like, okay, I need to try this. <laughs> and if it works, <laughs> if it works, I will, I will include it. <laughs> but I, I had no time to check it out. But, but it was like sci-fi for, for me, you know. Like imagine, like, hey Siri, uh, shut down my Amiga, and it will. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, which soldier says I have seen people converting old broken Amigas by removing the old board, putting a Raspberry Pi o uh, into the case and uh, adding new ports. Uh, they look great. Yes, exactly, exactly. That's the that's the thing. Um, and you have a fast Amiga having fun with that. It doesn't make sense to say, uh, in my opinion, that, oh, I don't like that because it's emulator or it uh, emulates the CPU. If it runs Amiga OS, in my opinion, it is Amiga and it's a great opportunity to have fun with that. Yeah, yeah exactly. I had actually um, in, uh, it was Amiga 36 or 34 in Germany. I had a presentation about about this like emulation versus uh, real thing. Yeah. Uh, and the point of the presentation was like, well, like you said, if it runs Amiga, it is Amiga. You know, if you see just a monitor with a workbench or directory opus, and you don't see the the hardware behind it, you consider it as Amiga. You know, and I'm not a petty person. Uh, to to like I like what I see and then I find out it's not Motorola behind it and then I hate it you know like no doesn't make sense yeah yeah so or if you have a phone you know who cares what what type of CPU is there exactly uh, you know exactly uh, Javier says compiler used for or in uh, Amiga kit uh, sorry Amikit uh, he says so if I want to build a stuff for Amikit, uh, what do I need? If you want to, what? To I build need... any application, uh, his own application for uh, Amikit, what does uh, he need to use? If he wants to install anything to Amikit, or I don't understand. To, to write his own application, does he need a specific compiler? Uh -huh. Does he need uh, anything okay, okay. specific? So... So, so basically, Amikit is uh, Amiga OS. You know, that's uh, that's Amiga. OS. It's not it's not a separate system. So, I just improved how Amiga OS looks and works. But behind everything, it's pure Amiga OS. So, feel free to use whatever you want and whatever works with Amiga OS. Uh, you just open DevPack which is a development package uh, which is included in the card and um, there you can find a lot of uh, a lot of uh, developer environments you can choose you know mm -hmm. uh, I pre-installed actually this is the work of uh, Philip Lonke my, my friend uh, from Germany and he created this package so to make make it easy to start programming or uh, or uh, Whatever, whatever you want. There are many, many environments pre-installed, so you don't need to, you don't need to go to Mnet and download it or install it by yourself. That's the folder that I have opened here, the uh -huh. dev pack inside the staff uh, partition, that has uh, Blitz uh, Tube, Ami Blitz Three. It has assembly, Amiga E, a lot of, of stuff that you could use. Um, available for anyone who would like to start developing and uh, there is also uh, tools for game development like uh, the red pill I see yeah, yeah. Amos um, we saw this says uh, we have to thank Midwan for all his great work on Ami Bell for that yes absolutely Midwan uh, Dimitris uh, did a tremendous job with uh, uh, updating the Ami Berry and uh, maintaining that all these years and he's making it uh, even better uh, every every month you see that he's doing a lot of uh, new releases so yeah without it I believe that Raspberry Pi it will be not as uh, interesting as it is right now exactly exactly uh, yeah. uh, C277 says oh my god talking to Amiga, ChatGPT, RX scripts and programs uh, with RX ports. 
Skynet will be child play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, possibly. Uh, you think that we have to hide all these Amigas into a closet so that we don't fear any attack anytime soon? Um, Javier says, okay, so it is uh, M68K. Yes, absolutely, it's M68K. It is not based on Arrows or something like that. Uh, so it is Amiga OS 3.2 based. Anything that runs on Amiga OS 3.2, it should run here just fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. It just has a, a workbench replacement, it has a directory opus. That's, let's say, the main difference against the Amiga OS 3.2 from uh, the workbench uh, perspective. And I have here. Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, let, let me say that this directory Opus 5 used as a workbench replacement, it's amazing thing that was ever created on Amiga, according to my opinion, of course. Uh, uh, to emphasize it even more, if there is no directory Opus 5 for Amiga, I wouldn't be around, you know, uh, mm. for 20 years. Mm. Because what really, uh, uh, what really, I was really interested in in directory opus and using it as a workman uh, replacement, and I was playing with configuration and file types and everything, and I was I, I was amazed how it enhanced uh, uh, the workbench, because workbench itself it's like you cannot do anything with it you know i felt like without hands yeah and with director opus i was like wow and this what was kept uh, me with amiga and is still keeping me with amiga you know because you can do really nice stuff it's a great file management uh, program uh, you have a hotkeys there you know you can uh, you can do whatever you want and workbench is uh, yeah workbench is still there of course but not visible, but directory opus is the thing that makes this really, really special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, on the other hand, uh, seems a lot uh, too much complication. Uh, but it's uh, you know it's uh, the constant uh, fight between, let's say, on Linux world, uh, mm -hmm. KD versus uh, GNOME, for example, uh, yeah. which. It's it's the same. It's uh, it's a matter. It's a matter of what you like uh, mostly. But I think directory opus, as you said, is powerful. It is if you want to to change a lot of things and uh, have choices to to make it as uh, you want to to work. It's uh, it's there and it's. Uh, I, I agree with you. It's it's really good uh, software that was released back then and now it is also open source. So if people want to. Uh, make it even better. Developers want uh, to experiment with it. The source code is available, and I think that you include the latest version from the op open source version, right? Yeah, yeah. I I even use directory opus on Windows. Oh, ah, yeah. And it's much better than Explorer, of course. <laughs> yeah, and much faster. Uh, have uh, something like uh, five thousand files in one directory and try that. To, to, to show this uh, folder with Windows Explorer, it will crash. Uh, but the uh, director opus on Windows is working fine. Um, you can check on, on Amikid, you can check, for example, the file types. If you press, uh, if you go to the right mouse button menu, uh, there is a settings and file types. And uh, you can preview uh, how many file types are there. Oh, yeah. Actually, which I created, and uh, these file types, settings, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, these file types, they are really cool in a way that um, uh, it recognizes, thanks to these file types, any file you are working with is recognized, and you can uh, attach uh, different actions to each file type. So for example, if you right click uh, an archive, mm. you can 
you can unpack it, you know, if you right, right click or double click uh, uh, image file, it will be opened in an image viewer uh, or uh, the sound will be played uh, with, the, with the sound player of your choice. So this is how you can configure the Opus, the, uh, directory Opus, just a small example. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's really... It's, it's really powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's much more powerful than what we have with uh, the how is it called um, in yes. Amiga OS three point two. There is a tool named uh, what is it? Yeah, the def icons. Uh huh. Yeah. Because but here it has only the action of the double click. You can't have uh, right click, drag and drop, and all the stuff that you have with Director Opus. Yeah, and you can you can also you can also create the scripts. You know, like uh, you can add many commands after each other uh, to any file type. So, but if you prefer, there is also a Directory Opus Four. If you click the Start menu and Applications. There is Directory Opus 4, which I also uh, enhance um, its configuration. Ah, uh, yeah. You can you can check it out in apps. Actually, what I plan to do is next week to have a, di a deep dive into the AmiKit and see how things are set up. Uh, for example, what are, uh, what Jan is using to have a um, Undialyzed fonts. What Jan is using to have the uh, nice borders uh, <laughs> on the windows and things like that. So uh, for me, things like that they are um, pretty interesting. And for example, what other what uh, patches does he have in uh, startup sequence? So next uh, next week, I plan to do uh, this kind of. Uh, uh, stream and also have a look on what uh, kind of applications are available out of the yeah. box with uh, Abikit. So, can we play videos? Can we listen to music and all this stuff? So yep. yeah, we, that will be uh, I think uh, pretty interesting for everyone. Uh, SLD Snake says I still feel lost with Directory Opus. Very used to playing Workbench Plus Directory Opus Four from the old days. Yeah, I'm on the same uh, stage. Uh, with you. Uh, Javier says, yeah, Director Opus 5 is very powerful, but you don't use it frequently, the workbench is enough. Yeah, maybe. Uh, as you can see, I know people like uh, Jan who only use Director Opus every day, Director Opus 5 every day. Uh, there are people who use it on uh, Amiga OS 4 as well. Um, Javier says, I, I, sorry, Go ahead, yeah. Regarding the startup sequence, uh, I did comment it, uh, so uh, so you will know what line does, what each line does, you know. And that's interesting. That's interesting, even for people who are not uh, a lot familiar with Amiga OS, and they learn a, a few stuff from that. Um, Javier says, I used had uh, Director Opus 5 on my 1200 Blizzard PPC and was quite happy, but when changing to OS 4, I reset to use uh, Workbench and Filer and, uh, hell, uh, and SL, and for me, that's uh, what I want. Yes, yeah, the, again, how you everyone uses the any operating system, any not only Amiga OS, it's, it is not, uh, there is no... For me, there is no a golden rule for that applies to everyone. So if uh, that uh, that's the way that you like to to work, that's fine. Um, but frankly, when when I first launched Director Opus Five for my real Amiga twenty five years ago, I was confused. You yeah. Know, because I <laughs> I was used to Director Opus Four with two windows, two panes. You know, like you copy from one to other and suddenly in Director Opus 5 I have uh, like many windows open, opened like you have now and but then I learned there is a source and destination directory you see the red one and yellow one uh, on uh, on your Amiga now so I 
I got used to it and I couldn't go couldn't go back when I like I said when I boot the workbench I feel like without hands <laughs> yeah uh, one thing that I haven't found anywhere else on any other um, operating system and directory Opus 5 does is when you open uh, two FTP uh, folders and you can copy from one FTP to another mm -hmm. FTP I haven't seen any other application doing that on any nice. operating system and that's that's uh, great because otherwise you have to download it on your local machine and then upload to the other FTP and it's it's a mess and you Director Opus does that perfectly because it has FTP, FTP access on its own yeah it has and uh, on the taskbar next to uh, Zeus you can see the eminent icon and actually it opens FTP you can try it now yeah. if you want yeah, 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 exactly. And connects to Aminet. So you can download from Aminet everything you need, yes. And it opens like a normal normal window. Like it's, you see, like... Exactly. If, you, if you're working with local files. <laughs> that's, it's that's, <laughs> that's great, that's great. Um, we Soldier says, uh, Jan, your director opens rocks. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. The, the director opens file, uh, four. Uh, it has a lot of uh, choices there. I need to, to figure out what they are doing. Uh, Drummer says, great looking interface. And uh, Javier says, to be honest, Workbench is getting old, but getting used to. Yes. Okay, yeah. If you don't want an old uh, Workbench, go to Amkit. Uh, if you want the classic uh, uh, feeling of the Amiga OS 3. If you want even better, go to Amiga OS 4. Or even Morphos. Morphos is uh, pretty modern as well. Yeah. Uh, Javier says that's what uh, Director Opus plugin have to be. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. This plugin is, is awesome. Uh, Ars Amiga says this is an amazing modern look with uh, Amiga OS 3.3. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I really like it. Um, and it, again, it doesn't feel uh, slow. Have in mind, guys, that we are working right now on 1080p with 32-bit uh, color depth. Uh, Let, let's change. Let's change the theme once again to dark mode. Use uh, use Zeus. Zeus. Yes. Okay. Desktop settings. Theme manager. And let's go with uh, what? Which one? V twelve uh, white and dark, or dark. V V eleven dark? This one. Uh, wait, uh, my uh, the stream is five seconds late, so I always see five <laughs> five second delay. Yeah, this one. Okay. What is the the thing with the cats, uh, Jan? Why why do you use? Uh, cats everywhere. Because I love cats, first of all. <laughs> you are a cat guy, you mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Emmy Kit is actually an um, uh, abbreviation of Emiga, of course, and Kit like a kitten. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> so, but uh, no, it has two meanings, actually. Um, a friend of mine back in 2004 or five suggested that it could be kit like this, um, like this flying car, you know, the, the, the series with uh, David Hasselhoff. Yeah, the Night Rider. Night Rider, yeah. And kit was this talking, uh, talking car. Uh, so I like it, and uh, and I was like, okay, so we can we can name it Emmy Kit, and it can refer to to kit as a kitten as well. Meanwhile, the kitten grew up, you know, mm -hmm, to. Mm -hmm. With this kind of panther, yeah. So, and, and this is a dark mode. So it's uh, it's not only about the backdrop, of course. If you open a window, if you double click a make it uh, icon, uh, it will open. You see now all the frames are dark. Uh, the window background is dark. Yeah. Uh, if you open uh, M U E M U what uh, eye settings, movie settings. Ah, okay. It's, al it's also dark. Um, you know, so so 
there are different presets for different programs, mm. including including shell. Oh, shell is also dark then. And I like the the way that uh, it is uh, so easy for someone to uh, change the themes with just a, a couple of uh, clicks, and you are yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Um, and now that you are going to add the ChatGPT that uh, speaks back to you and uh, you speak to it, it's exactly like a uh, kit from the Knight Rider. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arisamika says, this is an amazing modern look with uh, OS3. Very impressive that something like this is possible. Absolutely, Arisamika. You have to test it on uh, your uh, your PC. Your uh, sorry, your Amiga. Or uh, PC. Or PC. Emikit, yeah. Emikit X, which is now um, which is now five years old, uh, is available for free. Hmm. And Emikit X is uh, uh, available from Windows, Mac, and Linux. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you like it, you feel free to download it uh, for free and write on Windows, for example. That's great. Uh, and that's great that uh, you provide free versions of the older uh, releases for everyone to try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wiz Soldier says uh, it also has uh, useful programs and not overbloated like some I, I could uh, mention. I am waiting for the Sabretooth uh, Tiger. Uh, Javier says Magic User Interface version 3, 4 or 5. Uh, let's see, it is version 5. 5, of course. Again, uh, MUI 5 wouldn't be usable on a standard Amiga, you know, because it's very demanding. Yeah. Again, because of transparency and, and other stuff. But here on PyStorm, it works like a charm. Yeah, 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 yeah. We saw there mentions that Amiki Text also updates to 10.5.3. Sorry, 10.53 for free. Yeah. Uh, so people get all the latest uh, updates for that release. Uh, Javier says, by the way, who was the person that said it cannot be done? Uh, in a, uh, two weeks, then you showed them uh, Amikit. <laughs> uh, cool. Um, thank you so much, Jan, uh, for being here with us uh, today. Uh, and um, we had uh, this kind of uh, discussion about Amikit. Um, as I said, I plan uh, next week to dive uh, deep into the Amikit and uh, provide as much information about what is included, what people can do with it, and uh, how you d developed a few things, if I can get that information out. Um, and uh, I believe that uh, this is going to be uh, interesting for, for others to, to have a look. and know exactly what uh, they can get uh, when they buy Amikit for their PyStorm Amiga or any other of the platforms that it is available. Um, thank you again for being here. Is there something that you would like to, to share with people? First of all, thank you. I could be part of this. Uh, I'm happy that we made it work <laughs> at the end. <laughs> you know, I was, I was a bit nervous. Uh, especially with this with this Wi-Fi thing because it's still alpha, but I'm I'm happy it works. And uh, make sure to back up your SD card. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Because <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's really easy to mess up something and suddenly you know it's still Amiga OS three, yes. which is several decades old. You know, no memory protection, but we all love it anyway. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Uh, ask Ari Samiga about memory protection on Windows. He will tell you an interesting story about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Javier, uh, sorry, uh, Javier says, by the way, oh no, we read that. Iris Amica says, thank you, Jan. Uh, Javier says, yep, a great system, a great stream as usual. Didn't know how nice it's uh, Amicit. That's that's good to to know now. Uh, Cito says, very nice to get to know Jan. Thank you for all the hard work and congrats. And a lot of people are sending their uh, regrets. Uh, sorry, regards. Uh, regrets. Oh my God. Um, Javier uh, says, but we still uh, love Amiga OS version 3, version 4. Yeah, exactly. That's why we are here. And uh, that's uh, the interesting thing, uh, Javier, that we, oh, after all these years, we still have uh, awesome stuff to, to play with and uh, experiment and learn and all these uh, things that come with Amiga OS and people, uh, great people behind uh, those uh, developments like Jan, who is developing Amikit. And uh, yeah, I believe that uh, we are going to see much more in the future. So uh, have that in mind. Jan is uh, usually can be found in uh, the German event. Are you going to go on uh, next year, Jan? Amiga, uh, sorry, Amiga 40? Are is it going to happen, actually? Next year, I think uh, it is going to happen. And it's, yeah. uh, I heard that it's uh, going to be great it's going the the guys there are uh, preparing some very interesting stuff so next year not this year next year right? next year yes ah, okay. Okay. amiga 40 is going to be great and we'll be older again a bit <laughs> we can't stop that but we what we can do is to to have fun and play with the things that we love so yeah, hopefully it's still there or maybe somewhere else sooner. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, have fun, uh, Javier. Thank you for uh, being here. Uh, thank you, Chitu. Uh, thanks, uh, Alex Amiga. And uh, Will Soldier, thank you very much for being here. Uh, who else? Um, Drummer, thank you very much. Uh, SLT Snake, thank you for being here. Uh, and everyone in the chat that I might forgot. Thanks everyone, I really appreciate it for you being here and uh, uh, have fun with us, have fun with me, messing with uh, the uh, computer and I can't make it work. Thank you Jan once more for uh, being here and uh, we had that discussion. Uh, Amikit is great, keep on working on that. I, I, I think people appreciate your, your work and it's, it's great having you. Thank you, thank you so much. See you next time. See you next time, bye bye. Ciao. And uh, before we close, I would like to also thank uh, uh, my monthly supporters who uh, support me every every month on uh, what I'm doing and what I present to you and um, uh, help me uh, give you the 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 best of my uh, uh, power, <laughs> let's say. Um, and of course, I should uh, say that uh, my monthly supporters are uh, Breed, Christopher White, Daniel Zedlika, Emek, Liverlord, Tim Grooms. And um, have in mind that uh, you can find all the projects that I'm working on for Amiga on my uh, Amiga uh, blog at coffee.com slash Volcaro. You can find all my previous uh, streams there with information and also you can find the previous recordings at my YouTube uh, channel if you are not uh, if you haven't subscribed there please do because like that you are going to get in uh, notifications for the new content that I'm updating uh, uploading uh, remember that every Tuesday I'm doing the streams for the uh, Amiga OS 4 gaming night so we are going to see this Tuesday some extra games and I hope finally to, to finish the Doom 3. Uh, I thought that this would happen uh, last uh, Tuesday, but uh, it didn't because it's, it's, this game is it's huge. Um, and every Friday I'm doing classic uh, Amiga streams. So thank you for ev everyone for being here. And let's have a look if we can raid anyone. I hope we can find someone with uh, streaming any uh, Amiga OS content.
or not. I don't see anyone. Everyone that play Amiga games are off every Friday. So let's give a give a Joe a, a, a raid. He's playing some, uh, I think, RPG game. So it is interesting. Thanks again, everyone, for being here. Uh, see you uh, on Tuesday. Have a great weekend and uh, bye bye.